Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday, and as always, be sure to like and provide comments. What is mortgage fraud? Mortgage fraud occurs when a potential home buyer, seller, or lender lies or admits key information that leads to a mortgage loan approval or terms that the applicant wouldn't normally qualify to receive. As with many white collar crimes, mortgage fraud can result in up to 30 years in federal prison and up to $1 million in fines. The FBI defines mortgage fraud as any misstatement, misrepresentation, or omission in relation to a mortgage loan, which is then relayed upon by a lender. Some key takeaways when we discuss mortgage fraud. One, most common individual mortgage fraud scams involve identity theft and income asset falsification. While industry professionals may use appraisal frauds and air loans to dupe the system. Two, predatory lending activities, foreclosure, rescue, and mortgage reduction scams all contributed to the Great Recession in 2007. Three, mortgage fraud continues to be a problem in America. According to CNBC in October of 2018, one in every 109 mortgage applications is estimated to have indications of fraud. And number four, there are professional organizations that monitor and investigate mortgage fraud along with the FBI. Some key recent statistics. According to CoreLogic, mortgage fraud increased 6.9% in the second quarter of 2017 versus the prior year. The fastest growing subset of mortgage fraud is occupancy fraud, which happens when mortgage applicants deliberately provide false mortgage application information to purchase a home. Mortgage fraud is an umbrella term that consists of numerous subcategories of fraud, consisting of fraud for profit, occupancy fraud, fake buyer fraud, home appraisal fraud, financial income fraud, mortgage foreclosure relief and debt management fraud, and predatory loans. And we're going to look at each of these in short detail. Fraud for profit. This type of mortgage fraud prioritized by the FBI is usually committed by industry insiders who use their specialized knowledge or authority to commit and facilitate the fraud. Many times mortgage fraud for profit involves collusion by industry leaders, insiders, such as bank officers, appraisers, brokers, attorneys, loan originators, or other professionals. Fraud for profit focus on misusing the mortgage lending process to get cash and equity from lenders or homeowners. Very often this is a scheme that involves multiple people, all colluding together to try to cover their tracks to avoid any type of investigation from the FBI. Occupancy fraud. With occupancy fraud, the fastest growing type of current mortgage fraud, applicants deliberately misrepresent their intended use of the property. For example, a consumer may fraudulently disclose to a lender that they'll live in the house when they really intend to rent it out. This is done because applicants who occupy a house usually qualify for lower interest rates and down payments than those who are trying to buy it as an investment property. Next is fake buyer fraud. This form of mortgage fraud occurs when a bogus buyer, or sometimes also known as a straw buyer, would allow a would-be home buyer to assume another person's identity in an effort to get approval on a mortgage loan. The straw buyer typically has better credit than the home buyer, likely has higher income and lower debt, and stands a much stronger chance of getting approved for a home loan than the intended homeowner. After the home is sold to the straw buyer, the deed of the property is then shifted over to the intended owner. Next, home appraisal fraud. Home appraisal fraud occurs when a home is fraudulently inflated beyond its actual value. A higher home appraisal usually leads to a higher home price and more cash to the home seller. A fraudulent higher appraisal report is bad news in general for buyers, as it can add higher debt burden to the purchase of a home. Generally, home appraisal fraud comes with some red flags. 
including key data missing from the appraisal or fake renovation often are cited as part of the appraisal. If you suspect your home appraisal has red flags, you could always get a second appraisal. This may cost up to $500 depending on the size of the home, but it's definitely worth it if you're looking to buy a home and you don't think the appraisal matches up to reality. Next is financial income fraud. Financial income fraud is reporting inaccurate income information to get a better deal or a bigger loan and is a very common form of mortgage fraud that occurred during the housing crisis of the 2000s. Basically, someone fudges the facts on income and is trying to qualify for a mortgage loan they otherwise wouldn't qualify for. Like home appraisal fraud, income fraud comes with warning signs attached, including generic instead of specific job titles and the inability of the mortgage lender to, to confirm the apparent employer of record. Next up is mortgage foreclosure relief and debt management fraud. In this type of fraud, scammers contact homeowners offering help if they can't make payments or may be falling behind on their mortgage. Some criminals may find potential victims by viewing publicly available foreclosure notices. They often make promises of lower payments or making the payments of the homeowner in exchange for rent payments to their company. However, they don't usually make the mortgage payments and you end up going to foreclosure anyway. And finally is predatory loans. With predatory loans or predatory lending as they're sometimes called, a mortgage provider encourages a home buyer or applicant to lie about information such as income, down payment, or expenses. They'll also often incorporate a doctored appraisal in order to sell a home for more than it's worth. Predatory lenders also may knowingly lend to a borrower more than they can afford while charging high interest rates. This is one of the key drivers to the housing crisis of the 2000s. What drives an increase in this type of fraud? Well, there's four main drivers. Driver number one is demand. Rising demand for home ownership. U.S. home ownership rates hit 64.2% in January 2018, according to U.S. Census data. The second driver is supply. As home inventory shrink, and demands for homes continue to rise, that can lead to more fraudulent mortgage applications being filed as home buyers try to get an edge in a competitive home buying field. The third driver is home value. Higher home values overall will drive an increase in fraud. Mortgage fraud is always fueled by stronger U.S. home values, which draws more buyers into the market to capitalize on them. In some cases, those buyers will turn to mortgage fraud to get the inside track on buying potential profitable property. And the fourth driver is greed. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. In the event of a seller-oriented mortgage fraud, like home appraisal fraud, shady home sellers will try to artificially inflate the price of their home to get a bigger payday when the property is sold. So how to protect yourself from mortgage fraud? Well, there's a few things you can do. One is stick to credible referrals. When you're buying a home, you need to trust your mortgage partners. So try to find trusting partners, referrals through family, neighbors, friends, through LinkedIn, you want to be able to find people who can vouch for lenders, brokers, appraisers, and real estate agents. Two, avoid aggressive mortgage lenders. Mortgage lenders can push really hard to sign on the dotted line, and those really should be avoided. That's especially true in the case when mortgage lenders tout no money down or very little documentation needed. Take your time. Three, don't sign any shady documents or documents that you don't understand. It's a, it is a complex process. Understand the payment schedule. Understand how the APR was calculated. Uh, make sure you follow up to see if there are any prepayment penalties. Never sign mortgage loan documents that are either blank or have blank spots or have pieces that you really don't understand. Take your time, read through, and then consult trusted professionals and referrals. 
And four, just be practical um, and try to keep your emotions on the sidelines. Buying a house can be an emotional experience. Don't let your desire to buy a home cloud your better judgment. Um, so take your time and rely on the professionals that you've hired to provide the best advice. And lastly, there are some additional resources that can help you. I'll put those in the description when you're dealing with buying a home or in potential mortgage fraud. So from the U.S. Treasury Department, FDIC, USA.gov, and the Department of Housing and Urban Development. So check out those links if you are in the process of buying a home or refinancing, or if you think you may be the victim of some type of mortgage fraud. Thanks for watching, and as always, please like, subscribe, and provide comments, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.